Hey guys, welcome back to Red Devil TV. It's happy days. It's happy days for Man United. Ralph is coming. Ralph is coming to Man United. And guys, this was going to be a preview for the Chelsea game, and I will do a small preview at the end of the video. But man, let's get into it. Ralph Ragnick is coming to Man United. It hasn't been officially announced yet, but I'm assuming it will be announced maybe today, maybe later on this weekend. He's not going to be here for the Chelsea game. And to be honest, I'm not too bothered about it. I mean, he was going to have little time to get things done. And as we know, there were so many managers. There was Valverde, there was Poch. And of course, Ragnick is here to be as an interim coach for six months. And then there's a further uh, two years that he will stay at the club. And I, I think it's going to be director of football. I'm assuming he's going to take on one of those um, higher positions at the club and really um, get a say on who's going to become the next manager. And who knows who's going to come in the summer. I mean, look, if he does really well within these six months, so let's say, for example, let, let, let's just talk, you know, hypothetically, let's say we win the Champions League, whatever, yeah? And I know it's funny, isn't it? Because it doesn't seem, seem like we're going to win the Champions League playing like how we did before, but we're not going to play like this anymore. Ralph, we know. Press, high energy, attacking football and counter-attacking football. We know what he's about. I'm going to be honest, I remember him from Leipzig. After that, I completely forgot about him. You know, you know what I mean? And he's played loads of different type, types of football. I mean, we're talking five at the back, well, three at the back because he does play a very attacking football. He's played a 4-2-3-1. He's played a 4-3-3, a 4 triple 2 which we don't see that much nowadays. But I tell you what, if we're going to look at the lineup of, of, of how we could line up under, under Ragnik, I think there's a lot of things to consider. You know, this is high press. Is Ronaldo going to be in trouble? You know, is he not going to make the team? Now, I know that sounds crazy because he's Ronaldo, but there's a good chance he might not play every game. Now, in my opinion, I think he'll keep Ronaldo every game because he's such a threat. Uh, uh, you know, it's such a, a goal threat. And and not just that, but I think playing attacking football, quick passing football is going to bring the best out of Ronaldo. Ronaldo scored goals out of nothing this season. So imagine him in a team where we're creating loads of chances in the game, playing, playing high press attacking football. I mean, he's going to score every single game, let's be fair. And look, if I look at it, players that are going to stand out, who are really going to stand out in his um, philosophy and his way of playing football. It's going to be Fred, it's going to be Van der Beek, Sancho and possibly Bruno as well because Bruno does press but uh, not in the most effective way. Um, so I think under Ragnik those players are going to stand out a lot and even, you know, you can say Cavani, even though Cavani's 34, you know, Ronaldo's 36 and you know, Ronaldo's still playing almost every game. So I think, of course, we know Cavani's injury prone, so there's a chance he might who will, who will not play every game. But if we're taking a look at the formation, you could see him playing a 4 triple 2 switching. Of course, it can adapt to a 4-3-3 three, three and whatever, but I'm assuming he'll keep the back four. I think, you know, of course, that was that quote about Shaw that he talks about how possibly United needed a new, a new left back. But that was before Shaw went on that amazing, uh, his amazing form uh, before last season. So... I think he'll keep Shaw. I think Shaw definitely has gotten better. I think he's not in good form. I think Tellers could be given a run of games. I think he's a threat uh, in terms of his crosses and attacking play. I don't think he's actually as quick as Shaw. I remember seeing him against Villarreal. I don't think Tellers is that quick. Um, but, you know, he hasn't been given a run of games. Tellers is definitely one of those players who, who's not going to be um, prepared for get into a game straight away and put in his best performance in, you know what I mean? And regardless of that goal that we saw against Villarreal in the first in the first game against them. But um, look, I think he'll keep the back four. Um, th th maybe you can give a chance for Delo to, to, to come in for wan -Bissaka because wan -Bissaka is not a player who uh, Ragnik is really going to be like, yes, you're going to be one of the main uh, players who's going to make an impact in this team to win games. I, I don't think wan is going to be one of those players. You could give Delo a go, but Delo is going to have to be given a lot, uh, a lot of time to to really prepare to defend very well. He, he doesn't, their defensive capabilities are not even comparable, uh, Wan-Bissaka and Delo. It's just that Delo is just way better going forward. Um, we've seen Delo do bits internationally and, of course, at Milan, he done, he done decently as well. So I, I wouldn't discount Delo be given a chance, but I think he'll keep the back four. I'm thinking Varane. And look, this is going to be interesting. Is he going to play a Baye? Is he going to play a Lindelof? Who's better at giving those balls over the top? Maguire, we know he's not quick. You know what I mean? I... I I think he's going to keep Maguire, but I would not be surprised to see a Bayer or Lindelof come in, honestly. Uh, it's just defensively, there's going to have to be some work done there. Uh, but look, if I just look at it, I think it's going to be Shaw. I think it's going to be Wan-Bissaka, Varane and Maguire. But I do not discount the... Look, this is how close it is now. This is a clean slate for everyone. This is a, a fresh start for every player under a new manager. So I'm really excited to see that. 
Midfield, if we're going to play 4 triple 2 4 3 3 it can adapt to a 4 3 3 either way, he's going to play Fred at Van der Beek. The reason he's going to do this is because they're high-pressing, energetic players who are going to win the ball, pass it forward. Of course, Fred has struggled to do that many times. He passes it sideways or backwards, but I think under Ragnar, he's going to learn to really press effectively, pass the ball forward, and don't pass backwards. You know, that, that's, what, that's what's going to be... I think Fred might honestly stand out a lot under Ragnar. Can... Same with Van der Beek, you know, if you're playing a 4 triple 2 those are going to be players who are going to be in the holding midfield role. But of course, pressing, playing attackingly. And then in front of them, you've got Bruno and Sancho, I think, another two players who are really going to stand out with him in charge. Those are going to be players who are really going to be working hard in the game. And this is what the team's going to be doing now, working very hard. We saw against Villarreal that there was not much uh, press, but of course, as Martial was on, I think Martial is going to be having a hard time to, to enter this team now. I think he could be gone in January because he does not press. Um, but, you know, like I said, every player gets a fresh start with every manager and uh, players are going to have to step up their game because Ragnik is not a joke. You know, it's not like Solskjaer. You know, there's no there's no pity here and there's no friendliness. They're not friends here. It's, you know, it's it's this is at the end of the day, this is football and it's a job. You know, you, so yeah, I'm excited to see what's going to happen because this is going to be a madness. I can't wait for to, to see what's going to happen in the Arsenal game because it's probably going to be here for Arsenal. So... And then the front two, if he plays a 4 triple 2 whatever, I think he's going to play Ronaldo and Cavani once a week. I, I honestly think uh, Ronaldo and Cavani is going to be the partnership he'll go for. I know that, that they are the oldest strikers we have, but I really think um, Cavani's press, there's no, no one even comes close to him in RC. I think he's one of the best presses in the world, to be honest, in, in world football. He presses amazingly. And, you know, you could argue that's why he gets injured so much, Cavani, because he works his ass off, he works really hard and you can you of course at his age if you run a lot you run you press those are going to cause injuries a uh, long term as well so but i do see him playing once a week could be 60 70 minutes maybe bring on a greenwood after if he adapts the formation depending on if we're losing um you know someone gets sent off whatever but i think we will see ronaldo and cavani play together um once a week at least and, and then i think rashford i think rashford ronaldo is going to be a consistent combination as well but you know, Ragnik, is he going to have these these um, choices of uh, constantly rotating? You, you know, you've got Greenwood there, of course, Martial is a striker, Lingard. I think a lot of these players are going to be sold or um, gone on loan as well. So I'm really excited to see it. But if we're looking at that, I think that's going to be the team. It's going to be, up front, it's going to be a mixture of Ronaldo, Rashford and Cavani. Uh, I don't know where Greenwood gets a place in this. He does not press. Um... There are players who just not do not fit in this in this role. I, look, uh, McFred, is it over? Look, I, I had this question for the last couple of weeks. If a new manager comes in, are they done? And like I said, under a new manager, everyone starts fresh. And McFred could still play for a few games. We never know um, because essentially they could come become different players under under Ragnik. And we'll have to see. But I don't think so. I think Van der Beek, he, you know, him at Ajax, and and that's what he's about. Van der Beek is the player who's already most suited to that sort to that sort of play with Fred. And I think for them, they will adapt so quickly. I think players like Rashford and if Greenwood gets given a chance or even a Bruno are going to struggle a bit more because they, they need to be aware defensively and positionally as well. And that's, and that's something with Fred and even, play, even the fullbacks, you know, they, they need to be aware positionally where to be on the pitch. And um, at the end of the day, this is a team effort. So look, uh, of course, Ronaldo is, is definitely a, a discussion point. But I think at this point, it's not like Ronaldo doesn't press at all. I think we've seen even that City PSG game, the front three they have Messi, Neymar, Mbappe. They, th these are one of the best players in the world, and they don't press at all. Zero in that game, I saw no press. Maybe like a once one press that we saw throughout the whole game from each player. They don't press at all. Ronaldo does press throughout a game. He just doesn't press usually in the beginning. He presses a lot more towards the end, which is quite ironic because he should be quite exhausted towards the end but I'll say the last 20 minutes of a game Ronaldo does press especially for where you know where because a lot of the time we've conceded and we, we want to win a, a goal back you know and it's going to be different now we're going to go go forward we're going to allow ourselves to really get into the game and really push forward and of course we can adapt to a 4-3-3 I, I would not I would not discount a, five, a three at the back but I, I think that's less likely with the plays we have we have too many wingers um and they will be implemented, you know, Sancho will be implemented definitely in the squad. And that's why Rashford will, because if he does play a 4 triple 2 he's going to be able to put in a Rashford or a Sancho uh, or a, even a Martial. But I don't think Martial will be given a chance. And that's why I'm really excited to see there's so many different ways this can go. He can stick to a 4 2 3 one He can stick to that as well. It's just, listen, the principle is the same. Press, don't give team space. And if we play that sort of way, that city, city style of football, and we know what kind of... Um, uh, what kind of influence he had on Klopp and even Tuchel as well. So 
it's going to be very interesting to see what what kind of playing style it's going to take a while though it's going to take a, 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 a i'll say a few games to really get the team going because i think chelsea like i'm about to get into now is going to be a tough game for us he's not going to be here the arsenal game will be very interesting i think it'll be telling what the team is working on and we might not win that game against arsenal because we're not in better informed than arsenal right now one thing i will say is that um it's going to take time because these december games we've got a lot of games coming up and it's going to be those are winnable games anyway i think even under Oli, those games should be winnable so What's happened this season? For me, I don't know. We, we need to wait and see. Give it until... We need to give it a good couple of months to see what's going to happen, you know. And uh, I wish he could have came in earlier. I really do wish it. But let's see how it goes. I'm really excited for Ragnik. Now, let's get into the Chelsea preview. Chelsea, what's Carrick going to do? Carrick's going to play a 5 back for sure. Definitely going to play a 5 back. There's no Maguire. I think he'll go with uh, Luke Shaw at left centre-back. Go with a Bailly and a Lindelof. And I'll play, I think he'll play Tellers on the left, left wing-back position and wan on the right wing-back position. He'll go with, I don't know if Cavani's available, but if Cavani's available, we'll definitely play with Ronaldo up top. And he'll play, um, look, he's, he's going to have to go with a, a 5 3 2. He's probably going to go with Bruno, Fred, and McTominay. Uh, I, don't, I don't really see any any discussion there. He could play a Rashford um, because of pace up front. Um, but those other plays he's going to play, he's going to play five at the back for sure in this game. Uh, I just can't wait for Ragnar to come. Like, honestly, this Chelsea game is an important game. Of course, it'll be great to get a win here. It'll be great to get a win here because if we get a result under Carrick and then Ragnar comes in, look, we've been getting, we've been scoring goals by not playing very well, by creating chances. And let's be honest, I mean, we're always a threat. We're in the fight. We're in the final third. We are always a threat because we've got amazing talent up front. Rashford, Ronaldo, come on, Cavani. Like we've got these players who are so so dangerous going forward. And of course, of course, we're going to be dangerous. But there are times where many games we did not create a lot. We did not. We had like three attempts in the first half, none of them on target. You know, there were games, City, I think we had four attempts at goal, one on target. That's it. Or something like that. Um, and we had, you know, the City had like 67% possession in that game. It's not going to be like this under Ragnik. We're going to play very, we're going to have the ball a lot. And we have the place to do that. We said under Rolly, even under Rolly, we said we have the place to keep the ball, attack, press, Yet, under Oli, we're not able to do that. And that's why it's going to be interesting to see uh, Ragnit's coaching. I think he's bringing a coach from from uh, from his team as well to to, to Carrington. So, uh, it's going to be a madness. It's going to be a very different change here. And, and you can see, you know, I think a lot of players will adapt very easily, like a Ronaldo, like a, a, a Cavani, the more experienced players. But even the players who already are adapt, already playing that, I've got that um, ability to play that pressing uh, football, like Fred and Ivan will will, will uh, adapt a bit quicker because they, they come from, from that uh, sort of... Um, um, strategy and, and it comes from from where they came like Ajax Van der Beek came from playing that type of football quick you know it's high energy it's City it's the Liverpool play high press it's just effectively and that's why CDM will always be a problem for us however if Fred gets turned into an absolute beast under him you can see long term not needing a CDM if Fred can do his job properly Fred doesn't need to be amazing every game he just needs to do his job and you know Fred can be a liability you know he's not very strong he does get bounced off the ball but it's about press. And if you press effectively, players from the other team are not going to get the ball much. And they're not going to be able to pass into space because of that press and that high intensity play. So I'm excited, man. Let me know what you guys think. This Chelsea game, I'm looking forward to it. I think, I think we're going to lose. I do think we're going to lose. But I'm, I'm going to go with a draw. I'm going to go 1-1. But look, in, in, I think we're going to lose. I, I think Chelsea are too good right now. <sighs> You know, under Carrick, I'm not sure. That's why I think he's going to go five at the back. I think he's going to play very defensively and try and get a draw out of this. But that's why I'm just excited to see that Arsenal game. I'm willing to see us play differently. And I know it's not going to be overnight, you know, but I think some players will adapt well. Major changes will be made for sure. So let's see what happens. Guys, let me know what you guys think. Please like and subscribe. Comment your opinions. Talk to you guys later.